for that particular session, I would like to invite Dr. Kolnan Kumar Gangopadhyay as the speaker. And the topic for the next session is once weekly GLP-1 receptor agonist role beyond glycemic control. And for this particular session, I would like to invite the chairpersons, Dr. Shorak Kundu and Dr. Guthudev Mukherjee. Dr. Shorak Kundu is a renowned physician and Dr. Guthudev Mukherjee is a very senior cardiodiabetes physician and associated with our Diabetes Study Society. I welcome the chairpersons and as well I welcome speaker sir and I request chairpersons to introduce the speaker for this particular session. And this particular session has been sponsored by industry partner SIPLA. Here it is on patients on 
rapid acting insulin and on top of that you add either Garji or Dulabutadin, still you get a better HbA1c drop. Compared with Liraglutide and Dulabutide, Dulabutide is very, very minimally better, but that is statistically not significant. The weight loss of Dulabutide is slightly better than Dulabutide, but the glycemic efficacy Dulabutide is slightly better, but statistically not significant. So you have got very good HbA1c drop, you have got weight loss, you have got very little in way of hypoglycemia, as you can see here, as compared to placebo, there was no increase in severe hypoglycemia. There is some reduction in LDL cholesterol, opposed to SGLT2, where there is slight increase. Uh, there is, uh, people always think that SGLT2 are the ones, only ones which drop the blood pressure. That is not true. GLP-1 receptor agonists also drop the blood pressure. But there is a difference. SGLT2 drops both systolic and diastolic. So 3.5 um, systolic and about 1, 1.5 diastolic. GLP-1 mainly systolic. There's no diastolic drop. If you look at collation of all the data of GLP-1 and SGLT-2. So if you look at the comparison of the SCDOTs of GLP-1, few things which stand out. So note, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the primary prevention. So in the rewind is the one wherein maximum number of patients, 70% so of patients did not have a heart attack or stroke, so did not have established CVD, 70%. And half of them, almost half of them were women. But the important thing which I think is the duration of follow-up. So if you have got less sick patients, so 70% of patients, yet our outdoor is patients mainly. So at a cardiac event back a stroke with the shoal. So therefore you need about five years of follow-up to accrue that many events. But what does what that does tell us? That tells us that will tell us a lot of things. follow-up automatically a lot of side effects, adverse effects which would otherwise not have come up within one year might get manifest. So if a drug has been followed up for five years, more than five years, and no adverse effects shown then that you can have more confidence on that drug. So if you look at the other um, agents, say like in the Harmony trial, it's 1.6 years. In the sustained 6, which is subcut semaglutide, is 2.1 year. Pioneer, even less, which is oral semaglutide, 1.3 years only. So you won't get long-term use of adverse effects, you won't get that. So, now, so once weekly, it reduces the three-point mace for about 5.4 years. So, established disease if that patient is kept glucotide, I can confidently say that based on um, the CVOT, you will have 14% reduction or 12% reduction in three-point mace. So, this is independent whether you have history of CVD or you don't have history of CVD. So, Kuno heart attack was stroke taro same amount of reduction, yeah, heart attack has stroke achi tar comparison. So now a bit of controversy I'll, I'll now slowly creep in. So if we see the meta-analysis of all the GLP-1 receptor agonists, history of CVD, shabai bhal. All seems to be on the side. But when there is no history of CVD, look, it all comes to the center. Rewind is also touching the center, so statistically not significant, but at least it is on the side of um, Dulaglutide. The rest are all either in the center or, as in the case of Dulaglutide, away from the center. Um, uh, Pioneer 6 oral semaglutide, it is favoring semaglutide, but look at the big confidence interval because less number of patients. Heart failure, again, Again, there is some discrepancy in the sustained 6, uh, which is the subcut semaglutide. I expected that to be better, but if you look here, it is actually favoring placebo rather than subcut semaglutide. The rest all are favoring the GLP-1, etc. Agonist. Rewind is somewhere here, but it crosses the midline. So it's statistically not significant. At least heart failure, para mena. Now, the controversy uh, about metformin. So initially, the argument was metformin should be the first drug, any drug should be added on top of metformin. Because all the CVOTs, majority of the patients are already on metformin. But now the new argument is 
কেন সেটা হবে কারণ যদি খুব হাই রিস্ক ফ্যাক্টর থাকে আমি কেন প্রথমেই মেটফরমিন দেব আমি কেন জিএলপি1 বা এসজিএস টু ইনহিবিটর দেব না সো ইফ ইউ সি হিয়ার দিস আর দি ফোর ট্রায়ালস রিওয়াইন্ড লিডার হারমোনিয়ান এক্সেল নাম্বার অফ پیشنটস অন মেটফরমিন নট অন মেটফরমিন ইজ अराउंड 75 টু 80% সো 25 টু खराब कर patients not on metformin it is about 20% kintu the p value for interaction is not significant so although it looks like yara metformin in interact to beshi benefit hocche kintu p value for interaction is not significant so we cannot say or we can say is metformin thakuk or na thakuk benefit is the, uh, is there with the gsp1 kintu that is a bit clouded with the sglt2 inhibitor how now if you look at the sglt2 inhibitors if you include the vertis cv trial without metformin this group is without metformin it is here and with metformin it is here touching this uh, midline and it is not touching the midline if i take out vertis cv not available in our country take out vertis cv tale it becomes even more um uh, evidence so empa canvas declared patents all of these are available in our country so ekhane metformin chara ekhane benefit metformin dile ekhane touch and here the p value for interaction is statistically significant so automatically jolpona kalpona je tale metformin kichu ekta gondogol korche so theories have come up theory ki Well, SGLT2 exerts its cardioprotective effect via AMPK and SIRT1 induction, and reduction in heart failure by SGLT2 is mediated via AMPK. The AMPK के जो भी आगे metformin utilize करें तो है, ताले SGLT2 जागा नहीं होता के ठीक करा, और खाली SIRT1 रहे चे, तो उनका जागा नहीं होता के ठीक करा. So therefore, one of the postulations, theory, hypothesis is that that is why maybe. adding metformin starting in cell to on the background of metformin may not give you that much benefit however it is not as easy as it as it sounds karon heart failure studies gulo the seta nei heart failure studies gulo dekha gache metformin a background dile pore kintu better benefit so it's a bit of a cloudy area as far as sglt2 is concerned but for glt1 it is very clear metformin thak na thak bo dutro dei ek dik e ache so stroke data um, so glp1 receptor agonists there are multiple animal experiments which have shown that uh, it may be of benefit and you can see here non fatal stroke and that is the i think the prp of the glp1 receptor agonist non fatal stroke ke beshi impact you can see apart from elixir all of them favor the glp1 receptor agonist and rewind is somewhere here so i delve into bit more as to kon stroke ta beshi common so fatal or non fatal stroke there is 24% reduction non fatal a main reduction 24% and fatal stroke there is statistically not significant numerically better but statistically not significant what is also important is disabling stroke ranking score more than 3 don't ask me what is the, the score or uh, ranking score entails but if it is more than 3 mane disabling stroke oi khane this seems to do not try seems to reduce that তাহলে ইসকেমিক স্ট্রোক কম করে নাকি হেমোরেজিক স্ট্রোক কম করে সো দিস ইজ দি ডেটা সো ইফ ইউ লুক রিওয়াইন্ড ডেটা সো देयर इज 25% রিডাকশন ইন ইসকেমিক স্ট্রোক বাট देयर इज অ্যাবসলিউটলি নো রিডাকশন ইন হেমোরেজিক স্ট্রোক সো আই ট্রাই টু ফাইন্ড আউট হোয়াট ইজ দ্য রিজনিং তো আই কুড নট ফাইন্ড দ্য হেমোরেজিক স্ট্রোক টু মানে অদ্ভুত মানে স্ট্যাটিনেরও সমস্যা আছে এন্ড ইউ ক্যান সি হিয়ার দ্যাট देयर ইজ নো बेनिफिट উইথ দি ডুলাটোডাইড এজ ওয়েল but clearly ischemic stroke a can clear the uh, benefit disabling 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 stroke a clear benefit ache so microvascular endpoints so over 13% reduction you have to be careful when you look at microvascular endpoints karon heavy jor thake 
uh, on albuminuria. So almost all of the anti-diabetic drugs reduce albuminuria. The albuminuria reduce kore dikche amar microvascular endpoint khub bhalo hoyeche. No, I will not look at the uh, albuminuria reduction. I want to look at uh, initiation of dialysis or fall in GFR. Oi ta atate parche ki. So if you look at the data in dulatotide again, I will tell you that about 75% um, of the patients had normal eGFR. So more than 90 but more than 60 to achi. So more than 60, about 75% patients did GFR. Then I'm going to the garden variety which comes to your to see you and me. So a patient there, that they have a lot kidney chilo. Tadir ke renal endpoint ke improve for us. That is a big challenge and that is what the developer shows. Here in the data, if you look at the composite renal outcome that is statistically significant, forget the uh, microalbuminuria. So sustained decrease in GFR of more than 30, this is 11%, but statistically not significant. But if I go a step further, if I say more than 40% reduction, but more than 50% reduction, then it becomes statistically significant. Around 30 to 40% of the reduction height in progressing to lower GFR. So LDD, now coming to the LDD, rewinded LDD data, see if you have more than 65 years, and here is uh, less than 65 years, three point mace is similar, all cause mortality is similar. If you look at the heart failure, hazard ratio is 0.9 in more than 65, and is 0.99 in less than 65. So particularly elderly group, shekhane heart failure and beneficial effects statistically not significant, but in the right direction. Severe hypoglycemic events, ekhaneo, elderly group in more than 65, it is at least numerically better with the of time. Cognitive impairment, so patients with diabetes are two times more likely to have um, cognitive defect and about 25% of patients more than 75 years have some degree of cognitive um, dysfunction if they have diabetes. So uh, rewinded um, data on cognitive impairment which they use um, by using the Montreal uh, assessment and uh, DSST questionnaire. So substantive cognitive impairment, you can see here, it is far better, about 14 to 15% better with dulacutide as um, uh, even adjusted for various baseline scores. So the last bit, a uh, few bit is the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. We know that I can see um, a, a, a major increase in requirements for FIP4 score in the prescriptions that I'm seeing, and that is quite good. So this is a clear guideline, so low risk we have to manage as physicians, diabetologists, endocrinologists. If it is intermediate risk, and if the um, elastography is less than eight, we have to manage, not the gastroenterologist. Only if it is high risk do we refer to the um, hepatologist. So how do we manage? So far, uh, the GLP-1 receptor agonist it is not licensed to be used in non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, but we are getting increasingly more data. So this is data with um, dulacutide, where MRI uh, fat um, in liver, which shows significant reduction, not only in the liver, but also in the pancreas. And of all the trials with the GLP-1 receptor agonist, um, you have got trials with dilacrotide, you can see four, and one with dilacrotide, this is reduction in imaging. So there is reduction in, in liver fat content, you can see here, in imaging. Histopathology, there is two, dilacrotide and semaglutide. So you don't have data with uh, dilacrotide histopathologically. And that is quite impressive. I think the most impressive is with the uh, subcutaneous semaglutide. Uh, the last um, uh, one minute or two minutes I have got, I will dwell on the adverse effects. So uh, nothing is complete if we don't talk about adverse effects. So the adverse effects, retinopathy. So these are the baseline characteristics of all the CVOT. Mind you, when the CVOT started for the GLP-1 is a dragonist, they were not aware, or out, that's a wrong term, they, were, they did not think that retinopathy might be a big problem. So, in their assessments, they did not put a lot of focus on retinopathy. If you look at this way, uh, method of assignment, retinopathy endpoint, that also is a little bit different for each of them. And in Pioneer 6, they excluded patients 
who had qualified in retinal cataract. So what is happening is, if you also look at the SGLT2 data, notun gulo te, jadar he recurrent UTI history achi, jadar he exclude kore dae. Kore bola re UTI hoche na dekhu. We have excluded them. So here, now the newer trials, we will not see that much of retinopathy because we have excluded it. Aske jini ami PI hoi, ami kore retinopathy achi ekin anumai hao, GLP1 trial. So here in Pioneer, they have excluded them. So if you look at the retinopathy risk, this is against GLP-1, this is favoring GLP-1, so majority of them is going against. And here is rewind, it touches the midline, so statistically not significant, but in the wrong direction. And the last one is the acute pancreatitis, I'll take just take 30 seconds here first and sir. So this, me and Abdes have done a meta-analysis of acute pancreatitis, and I expected that GLP-1 receptor agonist should have similar amount of pancreatitis as, as compared to DPP. Receptor, uh, inhibitors. But to my surprise, if you look here, this one is the center, the DPP4 inhibitors, it crosses the center and it is statistically significant. So pancreatitis with DPP4 inhibitors is a real risk, but it is very little. It is less, it is much less than most of the other complications that we see, but it is never just there. So how about the GLP-1? It is right in the center. So if you look here, it is in the center. Rewind on, on the other side, but it is crossing the midline. Mind you, this is five years data. So statistically significant increase in pancreatic need. So I've asked in various forums, why this is the case? GLP-1 There's no clear cut answer. We don't know the reason. So I think the ease of administration is beyond doubt. If you have used dulatotide, pen, they are one of the best injectable devices that I have seen. So I think um, we have to move beyond glycemic control. Of course, glycemic control is very much important. Patient amade kache ashi blood sugar ta common journey. So if you look at that, then the uh, GLP-1 receptor agonists are very important and efficacious agents as far as uh, reducing the blood sugar is concerned. But I've just highlighted a few of the other areas um, um, where the GLP-1 receptor agonists have made a mark. So thank you, Jefferson, sir. With this, I end. Thank you, sir. Uh, excellent talk. Uh, any questions from audience? Is there uh, histopathological evidence that introduces liver fibrosis in NES patient? So. Uh, that is gone on. So I think it's only with two, with liraglutide and uh, subcutaneous semaglutide. So there is there is now increasing evidence with that as well. So previously it was just the ballooning bit which was reduced. So now there is improvement. So if you look at the um, American Association of Liver Diseases, they have put more emphasis on the semaglutide. That seems to be the best agent uh, to reduce the fibrosis as well. But I feel pyoglitazone is still uh, uh, the best. That's what my feeling is. Even oral semaglutide will reduce. Mm -hmm. Oral semaglutide, there isn't much data yet. There isn't much data. There is data um, uh, with oral semaglutide as far as SGOT, SGPT is concerned, and some imaging studies, but uh, lacking in uh, histopathological data with oral semaglutide. But uh, uh, with the dulaglutide, there is weight loss. Weight loss will reduce NAS. Correct. So that is part of it. So it is. So uh, when you break it down, so weight loss, uh, HB1C drop, so all of this counts. But this is in addition to that. So a lot of other agents cause um, uh, HB1C drop, but it doesn't cause any improvement. So this is not just the weight loss causing it. There's something extra which causes it. So for both SGLT2 and for GLP1s. Can we use uh, lidocaine? So uh, the data, if you look, the HB1C drop, it is similar for lean as well as for uh, overweight patients. Weight loss is dependent on your baseline uh, weight. So if you have higher BMI, you will lose more weight. For lean BMI, you will lose less weight. So there's no reason why you shouldn't use if it is needed. 
So it's not a contraindication at all. It's not that a BMI of 23 will be with some BMI of 20 when you use glutabutide uh, or GLP-1, any GLP-1, etc. They will lose some weight, but not to the extent that it's BMI of 35 will lose. So if needed, you may use. Your uh, clinical experience, you told that uh, acute pancreatitis is uh, not more. But in your clinical experience, uh, how common is pancreatitis by very difficult to say because, as I said, I exclude patients who have a history of pancreatitis. I don't use it. So, so I'm excluding patients who have um, a history of pancreatitis. So obviously, there will be less of pancreatitis. And if you say my experience is only a few hundred patients, so we cannot make a comment on that. You really need thousands of patients pulled together to say that there is definitely. Of the patients that I have used to love to tell, so far, <coughs> fingers crossed, I have not had any pancreatitis. Any questions from audience? No questions. Sir, I have a question. Yes. Sir, you have uh, told that, told that the, uh, there is a uh, definite 25% reduction of the ischemic strokes using of Dulagutai. So, any uh, evidence of uh, um, on the decompensated cardiac failure on Dulagutai? On, on Dulagutai? Yeah. No. So there is, um, um, it is numerically better, but not statistically significant as far as heart failure is concerned. So there is no impact. So the other question is, if it is reducing ischemic strokes, that is, that is uh, reduce um, uh, heart attack, so that is also an ischemic event. The answer is no. That is, stroke is statistically significant. Heart attack, not statistically significant. Why? Don't know. They are different pathologies. OK, thank you, sir. Thank you, speakers, sir. Thank you, chairpersons. I would just take a moment because we have a very beautiful gift from the blind school children, and we would like to give it to you as a token of appreciation from Howard Diabetes Study Society. Much <laughs> center, <laughs> 